I'm back to work on the project truck today and I'm drilling through the frame so I need some really good drills and I got some. So in today's episode of Tool Demos, I'll show you those drills and we'll check it out for the first time to see how they do. Stick around, that's coming up next. So I've been drilling in some pretty heavy steel lately on all my projects and you can see right in here on my drill index, I've broken a lot of bits. Now on this set, I've had it quite a while and I usually just use it for woodworking and household type stuff, but I've still broken all these smaller ones. And I, I thought I was upgrading here. I've got this Milwaukee set, it's cobalt. And you can look in there, how many do I have left? Very few. There's some broken ones in here that I just use for wallering out holes, but really this thing, it's spent. It's pretty much garbage. So I finally ponied up the big money and I got this set from Norseman, made in the USA. And it comes in this plastic uh, cup drill index, which is neat. You can put that in your cup holder for your on the go lifestyle. Let's check these out. All the size markings are in here on the drill index. And these drills are mechanics length. This is what I wanted. They're a little bit shorter than your standard jobber length or uh, you know carpentry type high-speed steel so this will get into uh, smaller tighter spots and so i'm going to check these out i haven't used them yet they look wonderful they are very sharp and on the larger drills here you can see it's got that flat so if you've got something like this with just that round shank you can see i've rubbed all of that coating off of there. I've actually had to put a file on this just so I can get it back in the index because if you run into any snags while you're drilling, this will spin inside the chuck and it'll chowder this all up. It's a really cool kit. Let's go over to the car. I've got a project I'm working on. So the placement of my cross member is going to be right here on the frame. I want to put this bracket up high against the top here and then just forward of this bolt. I've just got these here vice grips. I can use these to hold the bracket. It's kind of like my third hand. That'll make sure it doesn't go anywhere and I can use both hands to do what I'm doing. All right, I wanna mark these holes now that this is set up. I'm gonna use a spring punch. This one's from Lyle, I've been using this a while. I think this might be a little bit better in tighter areas because all you have to do is push. You can use one hand. So let's start up into this hole here. I'm going to put that point directly in the center of that hole and then just give it a push. All right, the snap on now, I'm going to put on this hole here, get it as centered as I can. Now I got to use two hands. So I'm going to hold the tip here and then pull back. All right, so now I know exactly where I want those holes to be. I'm gonna use this smaller drill to drill out a pilot hole so that when I go to use this larger one, it'll protect the tip and keep it lasting longer. This isn't gonna take much power to drive it through this steel, so cordless is no problem here. I've got my coolant ready to go, it's just water. Let's give it a shot. The tip of the drill has found the center of that dimple there, so I'm ready to go. I'm just gonna go straight through and use medium pressure. I'm not gonna try and push this through the metal. I'll let the drill do the work. All right, I just felt it go through and I stopped drilling because I don't want that bit to get stuck in the hole and then twist or snap off. I'm just gonna back it out carefully. Here's another testament to having multiple tools. I've switched drills for this last hole. You can see this has got a long, narrow barrel to it. And if you compare that to my cordless drill, you can see the difference. I was trying to get in there with the cordless drill and I can only do it at an angle and I don't want that hole to be angled. I want it to go in straight. You can see that I can go in straight with this air drill. So I'm gonna use this.
All right, we've got four 964 holes in the frame. That's just slightly higher than an eighth of an inch. And we've got this one now, which is a 2564, just slightly higher than 3 8 so we can use a 3 8 bolt. Now this one has the three flats on it, so it will fit right here in the drill chuck and it won't spin under high torque. So we'll just tighten this down and be ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go. I still got my coolant on hand here. Uh, if you're wondering what those suds are, there's a little bit of soap in this water, but it doesn't matter. I just use it for coolant. So let's go ahead and uh, embiggen those holes and uh, we'll get ready to put this thing on. Wow. <laughs> so this thing really bit into that metal and it didn't even make a full rotation here. Uh, I stopped because I was a little afraid of uh, breaking something. There was a lot of torque on the drill, so I just stopped. Uh, let's take a look at that. And that's pretty impressive. This thing, I think, is going to chew right through that hole uh, in, a, in a heartbeat here. All right, so it is really strange to me. I'm not used to drills being able to cut that fast and that hard. Uh, so I'm going really slow here. And... I'm watching and this thing, I'm going to be through that metal in no time. This is pretty amazing. I really like this drill. Uh, today's the first day I'm using this set and uh, I'm not giving it up. These things are definitely worth the money. Uh, let's keep going here. Well, I gotta tell you, that was impressive. Almost scary how fast that this drill goes through that metal. Now this is uh, about eighth inch uh, steel. I can measure that later, but just wow. I went from spending hours trying to drill through frames like this to <laughs> this bigger drill chewed through that metal faster than that little eighth inch one. Incredible. All right, all the holes are drilled. They look really good. And there's all the chips laying in the soapy water. So to answer the soapy water question, why do I use that and not cutting oil? That's because I think the problem isn't lubrication, but rather heat transfer. So with all that friction from drilling these holes, you've got this big drill going through that steel and you're pushing that steel out of the way. That's what this drill is doing. And that causes a lot of heat. So I think cutting down on the heat is going to help that bit last a lot longer and stay sharper than using cutting oil and trying to reduce the friction. Um, if you've ever used cutting oil before, you know that thing lights up with a lot of smoke as soon as you start drilling. Whereas the water, it may steam off, but you can use a ton of water I've got a big puddle here on the floor and that's okay. It's just water. It'll evaporate off. I can clean that easy. And that's going to keep my tools a lot cooler than any cutting oil is going to. So today was a huge win. I'm glad that I spent a little extra money on a really good quality set of drills so that I could work on the project and keep a smile on my face because it didn't take hours to complete and I didn't break anything. So if you're drilling through some really heavy steel and you want a good quality set of drills, I highly recommend these Norsemen. They are a little expensive, just about $100, maybe a little bit less. Uh, if you wanna check out, that's the part number for a mechanics length. It's a 1 16th through 1 half inch drill or I've included the Amazon link down in the description and you can click on that. It'll take you directly to that page. So until next time, thanks for watching. To see all my content when it's released, click over here and click here to see another Tool Demos video. You know you want to.